Okay, this is a backyard paint job, do-it-yourselfer, and it actually came out pretty good. I can see my own reflection, but it do got some runs. And the problem was you're supposed to wait 15 minutes before each pass, and I was getting a little uh, carried away trying to put it on slick, so then you end up with these runs. And so what are you, what are you going to do about that? Well, the amateur paint job, what we're going to do is we're going to sand them down, and they're going to look about like that. And then we'll buff that out and it will uh, shine up. That's 1500 grit sanding. I started with 320, went to 500, and then 1000, and then 1500. And there are a few of them where I had drips. And you can still see those drips right there. But I'm not going to worry about that because nobody's ever really going to see those once it's shined up. And again, this is a backyard paint job. Do it yourself in your own garage and it's real hard to set your spray gun adjustments you know the professional they have the paint booth they leave the setting the same all the time so it's a little harder when you have to do it yourself so I'm going to sand these down and then uh, I'll show you the buffing process first I'm going to do again 320 500 1000 and you don't need a whole lot of sandpaper you could I've done this whole truck with about one sh sheet of each grade of sandpaper. Okay, the easiest way to do this is use a little squirt bottle, put some water on those spots, and then get a little paint stick and wrap it around there. Just a little piece of sandpaper, and then you're going to sand on these, sand them smooth. And this is 320, so it's pretty aggressive, and I'm going to have to stop the camera. And I just want to hit those. I just want to hit these high spots, right, like that. And that's how you're going to sand those and knock those highs down. You don't want to get crazy and, you know, be sanding all over this stuff. You just want to sand on these little high spots. And if they're too high, you can take a razor blade and skim them off with a razor blade, but there's just not enough room in here to really do that. So I'm just going to sand them down. It won't take but a couple minutes to do that. Okay, this is an amateur paint job, a do-it-yourself. I did it, bought the paint, sprayed it in my garage, taped everything up, but I ended up with some runs. And the easiest way to fix these runs is take a razor blade and gently cut the tops off of these. It's, I'm going to put the camera down, but I will gently cut that paint off the top of each one of these, uh, the big ones. The easy ones, the ones you can get to, these big ones, that'll save some sanding time. And then we'll go with 320, 500, 1000, and we're going to use wet sand, and I'll show you that in a second. Okay, now you can see there that I gently cut the tops off of those. I didn't do them all, and this looks pretty bad, but you'll see once we get this sanded with 320, these will almost disappear. This is a single stage paint. It doesn't have a clear coat, so it's just a uh, urethane with a hardener in it. So this paint will get pretty hard. And uh, basically, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to wet sand these. I got a little spray bottle, and we're going to spray these up. And we're going to take a paint stick, and we're going to put our sandpaper on there. We'll get that nice and tight. And then we're going to sand on these high spots and basically you just want to do the same thing sand on those high spots with your sandpaper and I'll sand it and then I'll show you what that looks like okay when you sand this you have to sand pretty hard on these tops and you're gonna to have to dig in there and make sure you keep spraying water use two hands spray and sand spray and sand spray and sand so I've sanded that with 320 now you can still see some of those but again I'm gonna sand with 500 and 1000 and those will start to just disappear and then we'll come back and buff and compound and I'll show you all that on the rest of it but basically you know there's more up underneath here but I'm not gonna sand those nobody's gonna crawl up underneath there and look these are just the main visible ones so when people walk up on this truck they don't go man you did a horrible paint job it'll it'll look pretty good Okay, that literally took less than a minute to sand that with the 500.
So basically when you walk up on this, I still see a couple right there. So I can sand those a little better, but you don't want to go too aggressive or you'll sand through the paint. And even though you can see those, once you polish those up, those will go away. But I, I see a couple that I want to try to fix right there. And uh, I think that looks pretty good. Then we'll go to a thousand and fifteen hundred. Okay, with the 300 and the 600, those have pretty much disappeared. So now I'm going to wet sand, and I'm not going to use the fun stick this time. I'm just going to sand it by hand and try to work those. If I see any high spots, I'm going to try to work them down. And again, I'm looking up underneath this rail, and nobody will ever get down on their hands and knees and look up there. Basically, people are going to walk up to the truck like this and see that. So I'm not going to get picky and try to fix all those. I could if I wanted to, and it wouldn't take that long. This has probably taken me maybe five minutes, and it would have taken probably less if I wasn't trying to film it. But that's pretty good. I'm going to do it with a 1,000 and 1,500, and then that will be finished. Okay, that was sanded with uh, 1,000 and 1,500, and you can see that the 1,500 is still actually taking off paint. So it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. And basically, those runs are still in, you can see it, are still there, but they're underneath the paint. And once that's polished, you won't even be able to see them. It'll just disappear. But that's a thousand times better than the big old lumps that were there. And again, that's what we had before. That's what we started with. And now we basically have a uh, smooth paint and that's 1500 and then we're going to show you how to uh, compound it and then polish them and then we'll be looking great. I just wanted to show you another shot of this homemade uh, paint. Most of it came out pretty good and here's a few more runs and just a weird spot. This was all taped up and just this corner. Uh, I don't know. I guess I just worked it too much and ended up getting some runs. Again, we're going to sand these out. And it seems like a lot, but if you just concentrate on this one, two, three, four, five, six runs, and just concentrate on sanding these down vertically like this with that hard stick up and down, and that will uh, make those disappear. I wanted to show you, I wanted to show you what careful sanding is. This was a run just like this. And basically, you're just trying to sand off the tip of it. So basically, you're holding this paper, and you're going to sand just the bottom. And then once you sand that top off, the top of that, then you're going to switch to your 600 and sand this with 600. And then after you sand that with 600, but you don't want to go too deep, because you want this to stay smooth. So this 320 is pretty aggressive. It knocks this off probably about uh, 20 little, well, I don't know. You keep wet sanding it till it's pretty much flat like this. But don't go much more than that because you want your 500 grit to do its job and your 1,000. You don't want to sand back through the metal. Okay, that literally took five minutes to sand all those down. I tried to sand vertical, and look, I messed up. So I actually went through the paint right there. Hopefully that won't be too noticeable. If it was uh, super, super bad, I could always dab some paint on there and come back and uh, sand it in a couple days. So if it just looks real horrible, I can get a little bit of paint and dab on there and then uh, uh, sand it. So there you go. That's the 320. And then I'm going to come back and sand with the 600, 1000, and 1100. And that's going to be the last one I'll show on fixing stuff. But... I wanted to show you these long runs that they are fixable too, but you just want to carefully sand. I use this little sand thing, and I sanded across each one. I sanded on one, just real small strokes, and just tried to stay right on top of the run. Okay, this is the backyard paint job. We painted this outside. Uh, actually, we painted it in the garage there, but it's still kind of open to the environment. We had some imperfections. We had some water drops, and I'm not sure where it came from. We had a bug land on there, 
had a run, had more runs, runs. Uh, that wasn't too bad on that side. We had runs right here, another bug right there. On this side was the worst side, and I've already fixed this one and fixed these. You can still see them. Uh, I may come back and uh, buff those a little more. A bug. Here's more runs, more runs. This one was really bad. It was hard to even fix that one. Hopefully, it'll buff up okay. I should sand it a little more. This one looked pretty horrible. This is the one that I'm going to show you how to fix. Really bad. Uh, but that's going to look okay. I need to come back. Well, I say I need to sand that, but there's nothing there. It's flat. So you can feel that with your hand. Uh, it's pretty smooth. These, I don't want to get too carried away because I don't want to end up cutting through there. And again, once it's buffed, you won't see it. And had another one there. Had some there that I'm not going to fix. Hopefully that'll buff. And this one was my worst fix of all because of where it was at. It didn't, uh, it was really hard to sand that area. And I even actually cut through the paint sanding, so that's kind of crappy. But, uh, for a backyard paint job, that looks pretty good, but you will have to fix some stuff. Uh, again, the problem is uh, not painting every day. You're not familiar with the paint, you're not familiar with the gun settings, how thick, how thin, and you end up with some imperfections. The next thing we're going to show you is how to. Uh, compound those and polish them and uh, that's 320, 500, 1000 and 1500 sandpaper and then we are going to uh, just uh, compound and polish those. Those will look great. Okay this is what we bought to do this job. It wasn't exactly cheap. These were 10 bucks a piece. One's for, they're in the wrong package, but one's for compounding, one's for polishing. All this was bought at Harbor Freight. Uh, this was on sale. I got it for like 40 bucks. This is uh, about $30. It's 3M uh, rubbing compound. And it works really nice. You'll see that. And I didn't know what to use for polishing. So I got this turtle wax polishing compound. It seems to do just fine. Uh, and now I'll show you how, how it works. Okay, I used this the other day. You want to clean this, so basically you want to spin that and take a wrench. You need two hands and uh, put that on there and get all this old stuff off of there and clean it up before you use it. Uh, put some of the 3M compound on my spots. I taped over the door handle because I didn't want to hit it. And basically you need two hands to run this machine. And you want to keep it flat and just move it back and forth over the spot. Uh, basically, you want to just try to work this little spot. Don't try to work the whole thing. Uh, to make sure you hit this spot good. And that's basically what we're going to do. And then I'll show you the results. Okay, that spot is basically gone. But basically, don't run this too long. And don't stay in one spot. Because if the paint gets too hot, you'll melt it. And I could actually feel that it's warm to touch. But that's basically what it looks like. Uh, it hasn't even been wiped off, but basically that little bit of compound shined that back up to the factory paint. Let me, uh, see if I can do this one holding it. Basically, you just want to run that on there till it uses up all the, uh, you don't have to even go real crazy. It'll just shine it right up with a little bit of effort. Have to go real fast. So basically, just shine it till all the material's gone. Really hard to do with one hand. But it would be better to come back to that if it gets too hot. Uh, no, that's perfect. And then uh, we just keep shining that a little bit more. I just wanted to show you how quick that was. So basically, 
that's uh, shined it almost perfect. Uh, I would have polished it a little bit more, but it was too hard to do with one hand. And uh, I guess it's almost impossible to see that in the camera because it looks exactly the same. Just a few seconds of that po uh, compound. And then we'll come back and hit it with the polish. And basically, that just disappeared. You can't even see it that easy. Okay, I wanted to show you something with that buffer. It got dry. I didn't have enough uh, that 3M compound. So what I had to do was go back and wet sand this again with 1500 because it did exactly what people said it would do. It started to burn and melt the paint. And it looked pretty horrible. Uh, this one, I wasn't real happy with uh, my sanding. And when I buffed it, there were some spots still coming through. So I sanded that a little bit too. We're going to try to buff that again. Okay, I'm learning from my mistakes here. This, when you're doing these tough areas, that's a thousand. You want to just not go much. You don't want to put a lot of pressure on these areas that are real hard to do. Because if you do, it'll burn the paint. So that actually looks pretty good. We'll wipe it down and we'll polish it and hopefully that will be great. Here's some of the other ones. Uh, that looks pretty good too. It hasn't even been wiped off, so that's pretty good. Okay, the next step is we're going to use our turtle wax going to polish this. We've used the 3M compound to get it off and these are actually so good here I can't even really tell. I have to look real hard now. It's the one that was on this hood that was sanded. You can't even see where it's at. So we'll polish this up a little bit and that will be finished and then we have to wax it as well because this truck doesn't have any wax on it. So we might do that in uh, next week or so, a couple weeks. Okay, that's what it looks like after it's polished. You can actually still see a trace of the run there and trace of the run right there above my finger. But for a homemade paint job, nobody is ever going to walk up on that truck and nitpick it that bad. Now I can see them because uh, I've been working on them. But for a homemade paint job, buffed and polished, there's the one that was on that hood. It just disappeared. And that's uh, basically sanded. Uh, this one I only sanded with the 600, the 1000, and the 1500. Then we compounded it with the 3M compound. And then we polished it with the turtle wax. And as you can see, that polishing turtle wax looks uh, awesome. And there you have it. How to get paint runs out of a paint. And uh, make it look a little presentable. Okay, I'm a little gun shy in this area now. Because of the contours of it. But that's pretty doggone good. I can see some of the runs up here but nobody's ever going to look up underneath there you can see the runs in the paint but they are smooth and you cannot see them anymore only if you get up real close to them and that's uh polished the one that was up here i can see a little bit of the sag because of the metallic it's heavy, so that metallic sags in there, but that's pretty smooth and polished, and that's as good as I'm going to do it. So there you go.